Hello guys and welcome back to the MR2 build. So in this video we're going to be doing all the fluid changes. So we have oil, we have the coolant, we have the transmission fluid, gearbox and brake fluid. We've got a new filter and yes it is a genuine Toyota filter. Some decent quality, fully synthetic for the turbo. And then we have the gearbox oil. So I picked this up the other day. I think this car uses about two and a half to three litres max, but this was on sale and it's 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 decent stuff. It's fully synthetic. 7590, which I believe is pretty much standard for these cars. This car definitely needs a coolant change 100% because the coolant is rotten. I'll, I'll show you in the, in, later on, hopefully. But I've already seen a bit of the coolant come out and it was not great. It was it was well past its due by date. So this is just your generic DOF4, but it is DOF3 compliant also. So that'll be fine, this car. It, you can get cheaper, but I, I thought I'd go for the, the better quality stuff. Just so, I mean, <laughs> who knows when this will be changed again after I've sold the car on. So I think the next step is to get the car up off the ground, get the wheels off and start the inspection. This took absolutely hours. I took a chisel to it, plenty of lubrication, I welded a ball to it, I welded another lug nut to it, trying to get it off. I also welded this to it, this bolt, and it just wouldn't budge, so unfortunately I had to drill it off. So I will need to buy a replacement stud for the spacer. I'm just going to go out, drain the fluid out of the radiator, come back, fill it back up with some fresh water, and then put this in, and then flush this through. So let's get to it. The clean water is in the cooling system, so before I turn the engine on, it probably makes sense to put this in. So while I get the engine at temperature to flush out the system, I will put this in the engine and this will hopefully flush out the engine oil. And then when I go to drain the radiator, I'll also drain the oil. So I would have expected a date on this, manufacturing date, uh, could that be it? No, it won't be it. It's a shame because that would have been a nice indication when this was actually last serviced. I've had to guess a long time ago. So let's get this on. That comes pre-lubed, it's quite a nice little feature. 
much bigger as well. So I guess this is a 50-50 mix. Got the oil filter off, like I say, and that seems to be okay. There's nothing rolling around the side, which is alarming. Uh, as I mentioned before, the lug nuts, these are completely gone. Basically, like I say, I had to take a, I took a chisel, I took, I took multiple tools to ED40, even tried welding uh, a bolt to it, and welding some other lug nuts to it, and I just couldn't get it off. So unfortunately, I had to resort to drilling it out. So I've got some of these on order. Uh, they are 20 mil wide, I think they're 33 mil deep and they're uh, m12 1.5 thread so i've got a pack of 20 of these in order in black so they should be here shortly so this is the reason why the lug nuts were, were round down whoever's put these on it over talked them i mean these were super tight i used to break a bar on pretty much every one of these and i had to use the, my full strength to get them off so i don't know if you use an impact gun or what but this is totally rounded so when they've tried to put them back on they've damaged the bolt I managed to get most of them off. Half of them came off fairly okay. Some of them I had to put some tape around this. A couple of them I jammed a bit of metal down just to make it a bit tighter. And I got them all off, like I say, bar the one. But this, this one took me hours to get off. So yesterday we got the oil changed. So the oil is done. It's up to level. That's perfectly fine. It's got a new oil filter on, so we can tick that off the list. I've pre-mixed this, the reason being that I picked up the concentrated version, which is a 50-50 mix. So I've took half of this into a spare bottle and then filled it with water so these are ready to go into the car i've flushed the system over and over and over again i've lost count there's at least i would say 10 flushes that have been through this car and the water is finally starting to come out pretty clear we're gonna nip it all back up there's a bleed valve at the bottom right here i'm gonna tighten that back in and then we'll put probably a full bottle of this in get the engine running get it to temp and when it's a temp it should start going down we can top back up and then like i say i'll go to the front of the car where i've got the two uh, bleed valves open and the water level should be consistent on both of them and it should be no bubbling or air bubbles coming out and once they're okay i can tighten them down and then let the car cool top it back up put the cap on and the cooling system should be done you noticed yesterday i had the car in gear rolling round and first gear the reason was is i was going to do the gearbox oil change I ran out of time yesterday, so it's a new day today. So while the coolant is in and flowing through and getting rid of all the air and getting itself ready, I'll also leave the car in gear. And then once we turn the engine off to cool, before topping it back up, I'll then drain the oil and put fresh gearbox oil in. Time to drain the gearbox oil with a 24mm socket. Remember, 
always remove the top plug before the bottom. There's no point drilling if you can't refill. So that is the gearbox oil changed out. There was 0.9 litres and it used that exactly three times. So what's that, 2.7? So 2.7 litres apparently is what it takes. So that is done. It leaves me a couple of litres for, well, maybe not this car, but for something else down the line. And this is the oil that I've taken out. It didn't look that bad when it was coming out. And I must admit, when I seen it coming out that drain plug, I did think to myself, why am I changing this? Because, like I've mentioned, unfortunately, I don't really know the service history of this car. Now, for all I know, this could have been royal purple. This could have been some high-end, good quality gearbox oil. And basically, when it was coming out, it looked a decent colour. It looked perfectly fine. However, I've tested this already. When you look at it, it ain't fine. That is definitely old oil. That definitely needed changing. See, when it comes up the drip, like this... It's got that red tint to it, and you think, ah, oh, it's not too bad, but when you see it like that, that is not good at all. That is very old. I mean, this is probably, I've always said, I believe this car was put together back in 2007. There's some evidence for that, like I've mentioned in the past. It had an MOT in 2007, then nothing till last year. So it was off the road, apparently, since then. And a lot of the stuff on the car, such as license plates, um, had a date mark of 2007. So I think this car had a lot of work done in 2007, which is probably when the body kit and when the engine swap was done. So more than likely, this gearbox oil is from 2007. So that's out, and we have the new stuff in. Um, we're going to call that done. For those that are interested, it is 49 newton meters, apparently, from looking on Google. That's what they should be talked down to, so that's what I did. Cool and flush is complete. I have drained the whole system many, many times and it has got fresh, new, pressed on coolant in the system. I have bled the radiator from the top and I've also bled the heater matrix. And I've got the funnel on the top, as you guys have seen in the footage, and that's been bubbling away and that has been static. Now it's been sat for 20, 30 minutes and it hasn't moved at all. So I believe the system is completely flushed and clean and ready to go. I'm going to button up the cooling system, get that fully finished, put the caps back on, make sure it's all tightened down, there's no leaks or anything, and call that done. And I'm going to tie all this mess away. And the next step I think I'm going to do is because I've already inspected the undercarriage, the entire underside of the car, and I'll explain that in a bit. But now what I'm going to do is get the jet wash out and pressure washer the entire underside of the car because it's pretty, pretty dirty. A lot of it's just dust and general dirt and grime, but it's just a lot of built up dirt and grime. I just want to get it all off there. And while the car's up in the air, the wheels are off, perfect access. So I'm going to blast it with some degreaser, some snow foam, just jet wash, jet wash, jet wash. So the car's all cleaned and now the next step is to remove the spaces. So I want to remove the spaces, one, because I need painting, because it's absolutely disgusting. Someone's painting them, but I think they hand paint with a brush in silver. The spaces, so they stand out in silver, and the wheel's black, so the logical choice is to paint it black. So I do want to pull them off for that reason, but as I mentioned, I did pull this off by drilling it out. So I've actually drilled out a lug nut, so I need to replace the lug nut. I've ordered one, but to fit it, the space needs to come off. So let's go and try and remove the spacer. <laughs> Oh, 
guys so these came off much easier than the wheel came off the wheel took several hours these took 20 seconds on each each corner <laughs> And the lug nut is out it took some doing i went through quite a few bits of hardware some nuts and bolts and it's out basically this was inside from the back and i managed to grind this down because it was just so difficult i couldn't get a flat surface uh, basically in the end which is what i tried initially is i put this in a vise with the bolt on the end and compressed the vise in and eventually it just pushed out and i managed to knock it out the rest of the way using a chisel and so that's it guys that is finished with and let's move on to the next bit i'm not sure how long this video is i'm pretty sure it's fairly long because i feel like i've invested quite a few days in this so far for one video anyway but we're gonna go outside and we're quite simply going to flush the old fluid out of the system and replace it with new fluid this, so this is what i use to bleed my brakes i've been using this for many years now i've used it on loads of different cars and i've never had a problem so in regards to the mr2 you've obviously got four calibers and you've got the clutch so the clutch and the brakes are on separate systems they don't share the same reservoir so i think i'll do the brakes first so what i'll quite simply do is hook this up put this into the brake reservoir pull the trigger and that'll suck up all the nasty uh, brake fluid that's in the, the reservoir once the reservoir is empty I'll then top the reservoir up with this fresh fluid you then quite simply go to each of your calibers and what you do is you work the furthest away from the reservoir for a right hand drive car it will be the back left and the back right and the front left and the front right and you do one at a time and basically this will go onto the caliber when I pull the trigger all the nasty fluid will start coming down eventually that'll clear up once that clears up that is this this fluid coming down and once i see a nice clear stream of fluid usually about halfway down the hose i'll literally just keep holding the trigger and while watching the fluid come down it's usually half a turn or a turn on the nipple and that is it that is quite simply all you need to do and the clutch is the same you just locate your clutch cylinder which is in the center and it's quite high up it's it's quite clear when you look under the cars you'll see in the footage shortly you can clearly see the, the bleed nipple and the, the pipe going into it. What you'll find is this start to fill up. Once it starts to fill up, once you get so much in the bottle, when you feel confident, maybe a minute or two into it, while well, still pulling the trigger, tighten the nipple up, go back to your reservoir and top it back up because that will go down and you do not want to get that below the min because once it gets below the min level, you're going to start drawing air into the system and then you've got all kinds of other problems going on. So make sure it's constantly topped up. If you have a second person, make sure, maybe ask them to stand at the front and just keep topping up here and one last tip that i've used uh, on one car in the past which i had some problem with and that is you sometimes get a false reading of air coming through the system and quite simply what that comes down to is the nipple itself the nipple is just threaded in to the caliber and sometimes if there's a bit of play in the nipple once you get out a bit there's a possibility for air to get down now one way of getting around that is to take the nipple fully out put some grease around the threads some copper slip maybe and then put it back in and that usually cures the issue so i think that's enough talking so let's get out there and start bleeding these bricks and clutch
Yeah, that's a uh, 10 mil. We have quite a nice firm clutch. Feels harder actually. It's just it just actually feel better, which I didn't think it would because it didn't feel that bad before, but actually feels you're getting the full travel now, it comes right at the top, so that's good. Brake is very firm and we are still getting the weird fog light when I brake, which is really strange. If any of you guys know why it's doing that. Please do let me know because that is going to irritate me. This car doesn't actually have fog lights. When I install them, I just hope that when I press the brake pedal, my fog light doesn't come on as well because that will be a big problem. But we're going to call the brakes and the clutch done. Well, there you go, guys. The brakes have been done on the clutch, and that is the result of what I've taken out. That is absolutely disgusting. That looks like gearbox oil. That is not what you should expect to see when you flush your brakes. So I'm I'm glad I did it. Um, like the rest of this car, I don't know the history. I'm guessing the oil and everything has been done back in 2007 and probably never been touched since. I do strongly believe this car has been in storage since probably 2008, up until last year. So that is well past its due by date. So I'm glad it's done, and the machine did its job. It is a good machine. It's really cheap, and it, it does work. These are a handy tool as well. Um, to have it's especially working on bricks. Unfortunately, I've only got the 10 11 size and it's 8 mil for the calibers, but it works fine. In the clutch, so yeah, if you can get yourself one of these because you get better surface contact, you're only missing one side of the nut. If you're using a normal spanner, you only get the two. Don't use a ring spanner on these calibers or anything because you're just going to run the nut straight off. And if you do that, you're going to have yourself a bad day. So there you go guys, we've changed the coolant, we've flushed it and put fresh in, we have changed the engine oil and put an engine oil filter in, we have changed the gearbox oil and we've also flushed the brakes. So I think we'll call this one here, thank you guys for watching, hopefully you've enjoyed the content, if you do please do leave a comment or like down below, that would be much appreciated and please do subscribe to my channel for future videos on this MR2 project. So in the meantime guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.